Welcome back, everyone. COVID has made it difficult for Make-A-Wish New Mexico to grant wishes, and it's made it even more difficult to fundraise. However, in the month of December, the generosity really showed. I spoke with Sarah Lister, the president and CEO of Make-A-Wish New Mexico, to find out how successful they were last month and what they're looking forward to in 2021. Joining us this morning, we have Sarah Lister with the Make-A-Wish New Mexico. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking, and a Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Let's hope that it's a, a better year than this past one. Absolutely. You know, I want to start there. I know COVID has made it very difficult for uh, Make-A-Wish New Mexico to grant wishes, but also to fundraise. But it appears that in December, there were a lot of generous hearts out there. There were. We are beyond fortunate that people in New Mexico came together to support Wish Kids who were fighting critical illnesses. And uh, for the past 18 years, Legacy Church has fundraised and, and helped grant hundreds of wishes. And this year, they donated over $136,000 to Make-A-Wish to help us grant the wishes for kids um, who were having their wishes granted in or, in or around the holiday season. We also had an online giving campaign called Families Wishes, and we encourage people in the community to either um, join together with their actual family or with the people that they consider family and help fundraise for wishes. And so we were fortunate that the community came together for that as well and raised almost $50,000. Wow, that is remarkable. Um, let's talk about your rela relationship with Legacy. Um, you guys, this isn't the first time, right, that they've donated. No, it's not. They actually have been donating for the past 18 years. Uh, what they like to do is every year they ask us uh, which wish kids are having their wishes granted in December or around that time. And so we provide them their names and what their wish is. And then they ask the members of their congregations to make donations. And it's truly amazing. Year after year, they are able to raise those funds within a matter of weeks. Wow, that's that's remarkable. Um, and as you mentioned, some generous hearts within that congregation there. Um, you also mentioned, though, that you had this great fundraising um, idea that came up in December. Is that going to continue through January, or are you going to look for other ways to fundraise? So we'll start looking for other ways to fundraise. It ran from the beginning of December through the end of December. Um, and it's just one of the things that we've had to do in order to pivot from having in-person events, which has typically, like a lot of nonprofits, been a huge way for us to raise money, bring together people in the community. But it's been really wonderful to see that even though we can't be together in person, people still realize the need that's there. And one of the things that we really have tried to talk with people about is that yes, we have a number of wishes that are postponed right now because we aren't allowed to have children travel or be in large groups and we have specific restrictions within our state. But these are kids who've been waiting on their wish. So we want to make sure we have the resources necessary so that the moment it's safe to grant their wish, we can do that. And we're not having to wait an even longer period of time in order to raise funds. You know, and I want to elaborate a little bit more on that, because as you mentioned, these kids, um, they already had their wishes um, are already waiting to be granted. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that more kids are getting on that list to have their wishes. So even though you guys are kind of at a standstill for some of these wishes to be granted, you're still getting an influx of more kids that are, are needing to get more wishes granted at this time. We are. Unfortunately, you know, diagnoses for critical illnesses don't stop during the pandemic. There are more kids who um, are going to their doctors and finding out that they have challenges to face, and we want to be there right alongside them. And so... Um, on average, you know, we are, are moving children through our pipeline at, at less than a year, usually around eight months in order for us to grant a wish. It depends on what they wish for. But as you shared, if a child has a travel wish or something else that's related to a large group activity, we have to postpone those right now. And so we do continue to have other kids come into the system. We always let our wish kids know that if they would like to do something else um, and change their wish, we are certainly willing to do that. But we want to give them that experience that they want. And we believe that the hope that a wish provides is so important. And so we're going to continue to do everything we can to be there for them. We send them care packages. We uh, talk to them on a regular basis. And we just want them to know that there are tons of people around the state who are thinking about them and are there for them. There really are. You know, I know we have a lot of generous viewers that do watch our show in the morning. Uh, let's talk about how crucial it is to get more donations now, but also how they can donate today. 
Sure. So if people would like to donate, they can go to our website, which is newmexico.wish.org, or they can check out any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, um, and we're there at New Mexico, Make-A-Wish New Mexico. Perfect. Sarah with Make-A-Wish New Mexico, putting smiles on the faces of children in need. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a great day.